The next part of the rule says that uh, any member or members of the offensive team either stand or gather around a base which a, a runner is, is advancing towards. Um, and this would be either to confuse or uh, make the play more difficult for the fielders uh, than then, then that runner should be uh, called out due to the interference of his teammates. So this is if, if, if a runner or runners gather around a base to confuse or hinder the, the, the fielders, the defensive team, Uh, the the runner advancing toward that base shall go out, and this is related uh, somewhat to the, the next uh, rule, which is that any batter or runner who has been put out, or a runner who has just scored, uh, either some way hinders uh, the the a play being made on, on a following runner and then that, that following runner then would be uh, declared out so, so any any batter, this includes both batters and runners who uh, has been put out or just scored uh, they hinder the play being made a following runner um, then such a runner shall be called out so th this this could happen not only at, um, sites specifically at home plate but, but a lot of times you might see this if there's a, a double play being made so if we have a runner and, and, and the batter hits a ground ball maybe to the second baseman and the second baseman were to, to flip the ball over here to the shortstop and then this runner here who started the play on first base maybe he's, he's, he's coming in maybe he basically we're saying here that he has to get out of the way and allow the, the, the shortstop to make the throw uh, on the play he can't interfere with him uh, in any way or, or then both um, he and the, the he would be out on the play and then the, the runner could be called out on the, the interference and actually the very next rule that we see uh, specifically addresses uh, the, the situation of a double play and, and it's a pretty long one but it says that if the, the base runner deliberately interferes with a ball or a fielder who is in the act of fielding it um, then wit wit and this the, the, the runner has an obvious intent to break up a double play then immediately the ball is dead the umpire should call the runner out for interference and also he would call the, the, the runner or the batter or the batter runner out because of the the action of his teammate. And then it goes on to say that in no event can can bases be can runners advance bases or runs be scored because uh, uh, there has been a play in which a runner has committed this interference. So so let's break that down here that, that if a runner um, deliberately interferes with a batted ball or fielder making a play uh, with, with, with an obvious intent to break up a double play uh, then then the runner is out the runner he, who we're talking about here that who, who was the one who committed the interference 
then the the, the batter or, or the batter runner is also out and then thirdly no runs may score or runners advance so the the rules are very clear about this that if if, if a runner deliberately interferes um, with a fielder in this situation that, that uh, nobody is to advance and, and, and so then also that the uh, the ball is is dead as soon as the um, interference is committed and then in fact the rules are so specific about it that the very next rule pretty much repeats this the same uh, kind of wording only they change it to include that instead of the runner here they say that the the, the batter or or the, the the batter runner so who who the batter or batter runner he's we're referring to the same player um, and so if if it's the batter runner that deliberately interferes with this attempt to to make a double play then then basically the same thing the ball is dead and then the the, the batter runner is out and then the the next closest uh, base, uh, whoever the runner advancing to that base, he would also be called out. So the the, the runner, where the the double play uh, would have likely been made, is is out. And then of course the same thing: no runs may score or runners advance. So that's that's kind of like the same rule repeated. Uh, twice with just a, a slight word change there. The the next rule then perhaps uh, sh would have made uh, sense to, to introduce this one first, but but this one here is, is referring specifically to a double play, whereas the, the next rule just basically says that, that if a a runner fails to avoid a fielder who's a, who's attempting to make a play on a batted ball where he somehow intentionally interferes with a ball that the, the fielder has thrown, uh, then that, that runner shall be uh, out due to the interference. So, so the fielder or the, the runner uh, fails to avoid the fielder attempting to make a play. So that then basically uh, covers all the ground there. That if it, whether it's a, a double play or just trying to, to make a play, maybe at first base, then then the, the the runner should be called out for interference. And finally, we we see that, that if a if a ball touches a runner before it reaches a fielder, so touches. A runner before touching fielder, then he would be out. So this is similar to the way that we looked at it back when we just did general ways a runner could be put out, and that is if the the ball hits him in fair territory, he is out. But the, the reason that we have this rule as well is because it goes on to say that if there is a situation where perhaps the ball um, deflects off of a fielder or goes between a fielder's legs and then hits the, the runner, then the runner uh, is not called out uh, generally. So so basically what we're saying here is that uh, overall if you're a, a runner on the base paths, you should probably um, try to avoid the ball at all costs or, or and, and also to avoid all fielders or you are at risk of being called for batter or runner interference.